living in the city itself is too expensive. So you have to move to the suburbs, you have to move farther away. Every morning, commuting in like a sardine, pressed into a train, an hour and a half in, an hour and a half out. Imagine you work eight hours or nine hours, and that's another three hours you are spent standing here looking at your iPhone. It's, it's really a, a miserable way to live, I think. My name is Michael Wolf. I am an artist. I was born in Germany. The overall umbrella over all my topics since 2003 is life in megacities. In Tokyo, I'm compression. I wanted to show how horrific and depressing life in megacities can be. It's another facet of life in megacities. There was one subway station where the train, there was only one track. The people would get into the train on the other side of the train. They would be pressed against the glass. Most of the commuters were upset because they pulled into the station and they opened their eyes and suddenly they saw this man with a camera uh, pointed at them. Sometimes people just close their eyes and they say, if we don't see him, he doesn't see me. Uh, sometimes they turn their head, sometimes they hold their hand in front. Sometimes people give you the finger like that. They're brutal in the sense that they're extremely intense. There are many different reactions, but many faces are just zombie faces. There you can tell they're so out of it and they're so, they feel so miserable. It's not only this fast 24 seven life with food and going out, uh, it's drudgery, it's pure drudgery. That's a question I always get with Tokyo Compression. How about the people? Did you ask for permission? How do you think they feel? I never received a complaint from, from anyone in Tokyo. I always say, I'm not making fun of the people. You know, I'm not showing them in a silly way. I'm showing actually suffering, which I think is important for an audience to see. And if you didn't show them, I think there would be less awareness of, of how difficult life can be. I had been to Chicago and I'd come in from the airport on the elevated train at six o'clock at dusk. It was wonderful because you were on the first floor level and you could look into all these windows and everywhere someone was working. And I thought maybe I could do a project in uh, Chicago, which is more about transparency, about looking in. So I would only photograph at dusk, you know, when you can still see the building, but everywhere the lights are on and you can see the people inside. It's a bit voyeuristic because you're up on a rooftop and you're looking in. You can look into the offices and, and see people working. Um, but of course, there are also many condominiums and, and apartment buildings where people live. Uh, but you'd be surprised. So many people ask me, oh, what did you see? You know, did you see sex or did you see, you know, crazy things? And I said, no, 99% of the people are watching TV and eating pizza. <laughs> you know, it's totally banal, totally banal. People come home, they're tired, they sit on their sofa and they watch TV. Of course, Chicago, if you go out at night, there are lots of people going out. But uh, I did want to create a certain mood with the pictures. It's a mixture between office interiors, and um, there are a few very intense pictures of private apartments. But it was really for me to get people thinking about, again, what happens inside these buildings in a megacity. <laughs> 